so much sense because those trees are the source of the oil that feeds the candelabra. It makes so much sense, sense that it's the, it, uh, it's all the spirit, but it's, it's the one thing that our spirit can do with the Lord. It's that heavenly language we have access to. And I'm telling you that the more I pray in tongues, the more, I don't know, maybe aware I am. You know, I don't know what I'm praying about, but my spirit does, and my spirit you know, you just know certain things. You just are drawn to certain things. You're pushed away from certain things. You know, and um, it's so easy to just get busy and to move <laughs> all the responsibilities and all the, the people and all the, um, you know, just the stuff that goes on in this life. But when we take, like, I mean, in the car, you know, I catch myself, I'm just trying to get in the habit of doing it under my breath. And he, he, he talks a lot about singing in the spirit. I don't sing as much in the spirit because then I get distracted and want to write songs <laughs> in the spirit. But, um, but just to do that and just to, and, and, my, and my, it's almost like my spirit feels free. Like it's free to just yeah. move. And I didn't realize that I was bottling it up. I mean, I've always thought that I'm extremely verbal, I'm extremely expressive, that I just let it go. That's my personality. But my spirit said, no, let me pray. And my spirit has been, I don't know, just happy. I don't know how else to say it. There's a peace, you know. Take a second, <clears throat> pray in the spirit, take a deep breath, and then it's all over. And so I encourage that, um, you know, I know we're time locked in church. <laughs> Joseph Prince talks about, you know, there's a reason that the enemy has attacked the gift of tongues so much. And there's a reason that a lot of people are told, you know, it's something crazy, it's not for back then, it's only a special gift for here, it's only at this place there. There's a reason, because it's powerful. And so I encourage you to uh, pray in the spirit more and more. Amen. The Lord will lead us and guide us and open up the mysteries. I don't know about you, but I need this. Oh, God, I need the, the hidden mysteries. I need this revealed, and I need his wisdom. I just want to open up his word and take his time. Does anybody have any prayer requests or testimonies tonight? almost like a different language with each child. It, it's so weird to me. Sometimes like, I mean, even different emotions come through when you're praying. Mm -hmm. You just think, wow, this is really weird. <laughs> but, you know, but I don't know all the needs that they have. The Lord does. Mm -hmm. So I just, uh, yeah, I totally agree with you. It's just, I mean, it's powerful when you, when you, when you, when you sense and you know that you've been released from, from the responsibility of having to try to figure out what to do, what to think, what and be precise and so it's absolutely it, it is Amen. a fantastic thing and you know we thank the Lord for he's slowly drawing people in I spoke to that lady I just got done with like the Lord had a word for her had a word for her and so I've never seen her before in my life I don't think we have anyway so <laughs> but God knew who 
I feel like I'm directing it somewhere. I don't know what I'm saying. I don't know what I'm doing, but you're right. It's And sometimes, like, I, I remember the very first time I spoke in tongues, I felt like I was directing it to places around the world. Like, I, like there were languages that were different every time I would think of or point it somewhere. Well, there's diff definitely different languages of spirit, but I just find it so interesting that, that a lot of tongues is a similar language, you know, mm -hmm. to me. People that are doubters or, oh, you know, they're just faking and they're just making gibberish, blah, 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 blah. Pastor Prince speaking in tongues in that cave sounds a whole lot like Nathan, sounds a whole lot like me, sounds a whole lot, you know, like it's not the same words. It doesn't matter the words that are said, but it's definitely God's stuff. Yeah. I even had it with Salem. Before you guys even started this, I had to do it with Salem. And she looked at me like, why are you gibbering? I can talk like that now while I'm doing this class. <laughs> something every other happening. <laughs> well, Craig would be mortified if he knew I was telling you this, but when he was little, he wouldn't let me leave until I prayed in tongues. I had to plead the blood of Jesus. I had to pray in tongues over his room, and then I had to sing a song in tongues, and he had a name for it. I don't know, apparently it's something I sang at one point, and he latched onto it. Like, sing the Hundidious song, Mommy. I don't know what it was, but I was not allowed to leave his room. He's like three. He had no idea, but I was not allowed to leave his room until he, until I had done everything that was on his list. And I'm telling you, some of the most powerful visions I ever had were in his bedroom. Yep. And I know that that three-year-old little boy was seeing the same thing I was. I have no doubt in my mind. I wake up and he's just laying there smiling with his eyes open. Yeah. I, I see what happened with Craig is encapsulated within him. It's encapsulated in his spirit. And I pray, I know it's coming, but I pray soon we get to see that break. Yeah. I tell him all the time kiddo, you're the Lord. I don't care what you tell me you think you know right now. You're in your academic career of your life. You can think whatever you want. You can study whatever you want, but you are the Lord's. And he will reveal himself to you. I just pray it's not in a valley. It's in a mountaintop. You know? But God will reveal him. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, for sure. It's all over him. But anyone else?
thankful my sister Pam went home on Tuesday after her triple bypass surgery that was a little bit of a surprise. And um, I got to spend some good time with her and her husband um, before she left the hospital on Tuesday to go help her get dressed to go home. She was so excited. Um, and we just had a conversation about the Lord that we never really had before. And um, they were so excited. They found a church where they feel like they're not judged, where they fit in. And I'm like, well, that's called grace. <laughs> special. It was just precious to be able to have that kind of conversation. I don't know how many know my past, but it's I'm adopted by my grandparents, but this is my sister mom. <laughs> so it's a very awkward situation that could have really destroyed our relationship, but the Lord has really restored the relationship with us now that he's with us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we'll just put uh, Tammy and Jody Pastor and Roberto uh, on the slide. Let's go ahead and bring Tammy here. care of that situation and restore his hearing. Yes, yes. yes. Amen.
poverty cannot hide, Lord, where illness, where cancer, where deafness, where blindness cannot hide. In your light is perfection. In your light is healing and health. In your light is reconciliation, restoration, peace and love and joy by your Holy Spirit. Heavenly Father, stir up the gifts within us. Let your spirit rise up, Lord, as we speak your word in boldness, as we speak in our spiritual language, Lord, and stir up and ignite the gifts in our lives. Let the gifts come forth as we minister to those that you bring in, Lord, those who you bring to this house who need hope, who need a hug, who need something to know that it'll be okay. To know that you are good. Yes, Lord. Oh, that you are good, Lord. We are fully convinced of your love, of your mercy, and your grace. They are new every day. Thank you, Lord, that you are faithful, Lord. That you never leave us and you never forsake us. We've come here tonight. We may have battled on our way here. We may have battled just to get here tonight. But we have come, Lord to your house, to lift you up and magnify you, to worship you, to lay our burdens at your feet and to lift up the name of Jesus and to say thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let us ever be thankful and mindful of your gifts and your blessings in our lives. Our children, our loved ones, our families, Lord, our friends, Lord, our co-workers, Lord. The people in our lives are not accidents, Lord. They're that you continue to cross our paths with those who need light and salt and hope and love. Let us be fully human with spirits that are alive, giving life and light wherever we go, Lord. Let your kingdom light up this darkness in this present age, Lord. Light up the darkness.
sky is heavy Feels like the winds are gonna change Beneath my feet The earth is serenity I know it's time For heaven's rain It's gonna
stronger than the power of the grave. Constant in the trial and the change. One thing remains. One thing remains. Your love never fails. It never gives up. It never runs out on me. Your love never fails. It never gives up. It never runs out on me. Your love never fails. It never gives up. It never runs out on me. Your love. Your love. Your love. Your love. Oh, on and on and on and on it goes. It is all the wealth that satisfies my soul. No, I'll never, ever have to be afraid. One thing remains. One thing remains. Your love never fails and never gives up and never runs out on me. Your love never fails and never gives up and never runs out on me. Your love never fails and never gives up and never runs out.
In life, I'm confident and covered by the power of your great love. In death, is paid. There's nothing that can separate my heart from your great
Hallelujah. Let's give God a hand clap. Because he deserves it. How awesome is our God. How great he is. How great he is. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. He is so worthy of praise. Oh, hallelujah. To be able to celebrate his goodness. Celebrate his strength. We serve a mighty God. We serve a mighty God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, You can be seated. I love them songs because they celebrate how good he is. You think about the fact he never gave up on you. Isn't that wonderful? When you got a God that, when you know, when he was as far away from you can get, he's still there with you. That's awesome to me. You know, sometimes you have in this life, you have sometimes people give up on you and, you know, they want nothing to do with you. But God says, he's mine. You know, you don't give up on your kids. No, man, they can, they can do a lot of things you don't like, but you hang in there with them. Because you can see beyond what they can be. You know, we can look back out to the future and say, they're going to be somebody. Because we serve a God that understands us knows where we were at. He brought us from a mighty long way. And them kids, he's going to see their lives change because we can believe that God will touch them. He's touched us, and I tell you what, when we're the light of our life, light of our, light of our family, it makes a big difference because one of those days, those people, it's interesting, the people that don't want nothing to do with you, when they're hurting and crying, who do they come to? <laughs> That's the very person they come to. And you know, I, I, I'm, I'm always intrigued by, by this section of scripture that is always so fascinating because in life, people have a lot of questions about how did I get here? You know, they, they have a lot of questions that transition in their life, but I always thought this is so fascinating. This is Mark 8 and uh, Mark chapter 8 and 27 to 29. And Jesus went on his on with his disciples to the village of Caesarea Philippi. And on the way, he asked his, his disciples, who do people say that I am? Mm-hmm. That, that is so powerful. Jesus asked, who do they say that I am? And they answered him, uh, John the Baptist, others say Elijah, but others, one of the prophets. But he asked them. I like it. Now he's pointing. He pointing to, but who do you? Yeah. That, that's a question. God. Who yourself? Who do you yourself say that I am? That question has to be answered in our life. We come, who, is, who am I? Jesus asked him, who do you say that I am? And Peter replied to them, you are the Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one. You are the one. And we got to come to that. I tell you what, when people come and ask you, what do you believe? You know, sometimes, you know, some people hem haw around and all that stuff. But, you know, Paul, one thing about Paul said, I know who I believe. It's not a question. You don't have to question where I'm coming from. You know, I, I, I love my mom, and, I, and I, I was just a young Christian, and some things happened in my life, and I was really disappointed, you know, and, and sometimes when we disappoint in our life, sometimes we start blaming God. Well, God, how come you didn't do this? God, how come you didn't do that for me? And, and she was, a, she was a, a woman that just, you know, she wasn't really outspoken about a lot of stuff, but when it came to God, if you was bad-mouthing God, that little woman spoke up, let me tell you. And she, and she got on my case. Don't you ever talk about God that way. God is good to you. And I thought, wow, man, she's pretty really fired up. But that told me something, what she believed in. You touch the apple of the eye when you start talking about God and what he's done. Because I'm telling you what, when we get to that point where we look at God and see God in everything, we've grown a lot. Even when those things don't go well, we can still cry out to God, thank you, because they could have been a lot worse, let me tell you. Oh, Tim, you don't know, it's a bad situation. And I often say this, it's true, you know, people say, oh, man, I tell you what, there's no place to go. I come to the end, and I always say the same thing. When they come to me, I said, that's good. And they look at, you know what, what are you talking about? Because Jesus says he's the beginning and the ending. You come in, you come right up against him. You come to the end of my rope, that's good. Jesus still, he's still there with you. You know, David said in, in the song, if I make my bed in hell, and I always say that, if you make your bed in hell, you plan on coming back. You know, <laughs> if you make, took the time to make your bed up, yeah. 
But I say, God's there. Wherever you can go, I can take wings and fly away. Some people say, well, I'll start again if, if I go to a different country. I used, to, I used to haul furniture, and i never forget. God bless this lady this years ago. But she had some situations in California, and she moved to Iowa. She moved to Iowa on a Friday, unloaded the furniture. Then we got a call, got a call to go back out to her place. She bought a condo here in Iowa, went back at her place on Monday and said, pack it up, she's going back. And that was just over the weekend. And I'm thinking, well, how could somebody spend all that money? Because the person thought, if I change locations, I'm going to run away from the problem. It doesn't work that way. The problems came because they start here. That's where Jesus always works. He works from the inside out. You know, people say, <clears throat> well, if you can just change my work environment, or if I can just have more money, if I can have a bigger car or a bigger house, that don't always work. Look at all the people who got mansions. They ain't happy because it starts here. Right. <clears throat> when we look at Deuteronomy chapter 6, I tell you what, Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5, it's one of my favorite scriptures in the whole Bible because that's where it starts. It starts with loving God. That's where it starts with putting him first, not second. You know, he's got to have first place in our life, predominance. And one thing I love about Deuteronomy chapter 6, oh, hallelujah, verse 5, this is where it starts. And you should love the Lord your God with all your mind and heart and with your entire being with all your might. That's where it starts at. You want things to turn around your life, turn around the country? That's where it starts with putting God first. You know, it's singing hallelujah. I know, you know, we got a lot of stuff going on in the country. And people, why is this happening? Because we need to turn back to God and reverence him. That makes all the difference. Yep. You know, it makes a difference just in our family. When we put him first, you give God those first few minutes of your day, what a difference that makes. I love when I get up in the morning. <clears throat> I mean, I know people look at cell phones a little differently, but I love them to have the, have the smartphone because, man, you can pull the scriptures up. You know, you can go through different versions, and I got certain little sites I go to. I do that every morning. It's relaxing, it's quiet, and you can go to those verses. What's the verse of the day? Little thing that inspire you. It just focuses you on the reason you're up this morning, because God woke you up. Yep. Everybody didn't get up this morning. Right. You know, we planned on it. I had, I had a co-worker, God bless him. I was just talking to him Friday. I, I just was talking, he said, you know, I'm not feeling very well, and, and I just seem like it, maybe it's the air or, 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 or just, just something. I just don't seem to breathe very good, and he was coughing and everything. Found out he had a heart attack wow. that quick. You know, he was just talking Friday. Well, he, he's coming out of it now, but he didn't have to. Right. You know, God, I mean, he could have been called home, and I was just talking to him Friday. And I'm thinking, man, how quick did that happen? Yep. You know, just one instant. You know, and, and one, one person said, we really ought to live our lives like it is our last day. Everything you ever wanted to say to somebody, you need to say it. See, sometimes we put it off. You know, we'll, 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 we'll talk to them. We'll send them a message. When God lays on your heart to go see that person or go talk to that person, let's do it now to encourage that person. Because we never know. So many times I feel God impressed me to call this person. And they said, well, man, I, I'm so glad you called. Man, I was just thinking about you. Well, who does that? You know it ain't Satan because he don't care about nobody. He don't care if you don't call or don't visit nobody. People ask me all the time, how do you know if it's God's will or, or, or it's just me? Well, I'm telling you, if you spend time in God's word and you reverence God, he'll guide you. Yep. Why does Satan want you to go pray for somebody? You know? Because <laughs> he, he don't care. Right. He don't care. He, he don't want you to spend time. It's a whole lot. You know, we can, we can read this Bible as if it was a novel, okay? But I'm telling you, I tell you, Rebecca Sunny Big Farm never changed my life, let me tell you. <laughs> she never did. That book never did change my life. But this changed my life because it's a living word. It makes a difference. When you see this, oh, I'm opening up and said that I'm supposed to love the Lord with, with all my heart, all my soul, all my entire being, that's where I got to start at. And you know why? If we start there, then it allows me to love my neighbor. See, isn't that a big difference? Yeah. If I start there, I can say, well, I can start praying for my neighbor. 
You know, it's, it's funny. We think about how come we can't get along with, with, with people in this country and that country. We've got to start with a neighbor. That's where it starts at. Yeah. That's where it starts. It's close, and sometimes it comes closer than that in the household. I tell you what, that's why the Bible says we're supposed to talk to our kids. What is fun? Well, we got a generation gap. You know, they always say it. They've said that to every generation. Well, they don't understand. I tell you what, you can meet in the middle by starting right here. Right. You know, what do you think about this scripture? It's, it's interesting. I was talking to uh, my daughters one time about what they remember most about growing up. And, you know, it, it's interesting. It didn't, the clothes didn't come up. You know, you, you spend money on toys and you buy all this stuff. You know what they remember the most was most important when I used to come up here and we go down to the Moines River and sit on the bank and we study the Bible, have a Bible study. That's what they remember. And I thought that was fascinating because they thought that brought us close together. Why? Because in Dad's life, God did make a difference. He didn't always do everything right, but God didn't matter. When you see your kids pray, you know, when, you, when, and when they imitate you because you're praying, you're down on your knees, there's something get transferred. That's what changed the life. I, I, I love it when kids pray because kids, you know, uh, 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 we, we used to have a little nephew and we pray with him every night and go to bed. It's a, you know, I want you to remember my mom. I want you to remember this person. That's precious to God. Yeah. You know, prayer, the, the one thing I love about prayer, you know, is it, it, it's, it's we can get closer to God and think about the creator God hears us. I mean, to me, that is so fascinating, you know, because you, where can you do that? We can't, we can't go in the White House. I can't go say, look, I want to talk to the President of the United States. Do you, do you have appointments? Did we check you out? You can't just walk. They arrest you there, right? But think about the God of all glory, the one created us so that you can talk to him. I love that. I always love the story when, 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 when the, uh, the, the woman with the issue of blood went through the crowd, and we've probably been in, you know, we've been in crowds and concerts and, and football games. You have 50,000, 60,000 people, and you go, and, and they're bumping up, a, you know, get, he, she's going through the crowd, and, 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 and Jesus said, you know, get all these people around it, and, and he, said, he, said, he said, who touched me? Right. <clears throat> well, the disciples, they, they were men. Who touched you? What are you talking about? There, there's all these people rubbing. No, 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 you don't understand. There was a difference. Because virtue went out of me, there's a difference. Somebody wants something from me. Somebody wants some healing. Because I feel it go out. And, and, that, and that, that is so powerful. And you know, she pressed through the crowd. You know, she was determined. That's what God wants right now. He, people are determined not to say, I don't care whatever people thought. She'd spend all her money. You know, and, and, and you know, she, she, when, you, when you have issues of blood and all that thing, you might not smell the best. You don't care what other people think. That's what stops some people from serving the Lord. Right. Oh, what are they going to think about me if I go over there, if I raise my hands up? I was in a church one time, you know, and they, they didn't like, <clears throat> you know, they just was one, wasn't much for lifting their hands up, you know. Well, I'm sorry. I, I'm not trying to bother you, but I got to lift my hands up and praise the Lord. Some people lift their hands up like that. The church thinks somebody's sticking you up or something there in the back or something. <laughs> what do you got your hands up for? What do I got my hands up for? Because I want to praise my God. I'm not going to stop. I remember in a church out in East Orange, New Jersey. i never forget. I was out driving a truck. I wanted to go to church. And they, and they had a, the, the back door and they had a little curtain there. But we was trying to go in. The door was locked. Huh. And they was having so you could see people and the door was locked. So we banged on the door and the, the deacon opened the little curtain up. and kind of looked at it. And you could hear him say, what do you guys want? What do we want? We want to go to church. That's the one. Oh, okay, come in. Come in. And we come in, it was just fine. I said, we have to keep the door locked because the, the gangs come in and rob the congregation. I thought, man, what a terrible situation. And when, you, when you're worried about if there's somebody going to come in the store, and in the door. But I said, that's all right. We're still going to praise God. I don't care if the machine guns are going off. We're still going to praise God. We had a great time in there because God was still in there. Yeah. They think we're going to praise God, but I see where they're protecting their people. But some people, they won't go because... What's my neighbor? You know, you say keep up with the Joneses. They always know people. They got to keep up with this, you know. Well, I tell you what, sometimes the Joneses ain't the best to keep up with. You better learn to keep up with God. That makes a difference. What God thinks of you is the big difference. It's not what everybody else thinks. And we think about that one with the issue of blood. I'm going to press through this crowd. I don't care what people think. I know if I could just 
touch the hem of his garment. That's going to make a difference in my life. And, and to have that hunger, you know, it, it's, it's, it's like so many times in the Bible, you know, you think about uh, uh, Zacchaeus and you think about different ones that just made that extra effort. Right. Just made that extra effort. Right. You know, like, like the blind, well, who, you know, he's, Jesus come along and he's crying out. Oh, no, be quiet. We don't want to disturb him. We don't want to disturb Jesus. He walk along. Don't disturb. Who's coming? Jesus is coming. Oh, no. No, no. You're supposed to be quiet. Well, I ain't going to be quiet. I think we've been quiet long enough. It's time for us to say and declare who we believe in. Yes. You know, it's no shame. I tell you what, if you, the Super Bowl's coming up, and I guarantee you, when they play the game, there's nobody going to be whispering in the crowd for their team. Uh, go, go, Denver. Go. Come on. Come on, Peyton. <laughs> You know nobody's going to. How many people watch that game? Billions of people, they watch it, and they, and they have different commentators from all over the world, and billions of people, and, you know, they have all the parties and stuff. Well, they can root for, for a game, which is a man's game. I understand. To me, it's not a spiritual experience, let me tell you. It's not, it's not that kind. It's not that kind. It's, to me, it's not a life-changing event. And let me tell you, but it's entertaining. It's been family. I understand that. But let me tell you. But they're not going to be quiet for the team they're rooting for. Why should we be quiet for the team we're rooting for, Team Jesus Christ? Why should we be quiet? You know, I, I, I just think as, as I get older, I realize I'm going to praise God more. That's what's going to happen. I'm going to believe God for more change in people's life. I'm going to believe God that my family, every one of them will come to know him and cry out, the Lord save you. It's like, who do you say that I am? I know who you are. You're the one that changed my life forever. You're the one that's never going to give up on me. You're the one that's going to hang in there with me. You're going to one that can keep, keep stepping with me so I can grow and be better. And when the, and we think about the, the, the one issue of blood, she fell down, turned around, who touched me? And she was trembling. And you know what? I love, I love. You know, Jesus was just so compassionate. You know, he, he could have said a lot of things, you know, but she just told him his whole story. What, why are you? And he, he, just, he just bear it out. And that's what we got to do. Just tell him a whole story. We can't hide from God. Like I often said, why do people sin with the shades down? Never have figured that out. You know? I think pastor said he might get arrested if they leave the shade up. But, but what I'm saying, why do we do that? You ain't hiding God. One, one well-known preacher said, you got to think of sin. Sin is an ugly thing. Sometimes we don't think of it like that. But one person said, we ought to think of sin. It's like when, when, when we sit here on earth, God's got a big IMAX screen. And you've been to IMAX theater. I mean, it's a big screen. And every act you do, God's looking at that screen. Now, how are you going to hide from that? The best thing, like Jesus, Jesus was saying, you know, when it comes to God, we ought to worship him in spirit and in truth. I love that, in spirit. You know, if you pray in tongues, that's fine. Just spirit. Give that spiritualness to God and in truth. That's a big thing. Why are we going to come to God and not be truthful? He, gonna, he reads your heart anyway. Right. Just come to him. You know, like I, I can, you know, you can feel in your life sometimes that you're going through a test. You know it's a trial. I mean, it, it's just a lot of stuff weighing on you. Yeah, yeah. You know, and sometimes I'll be honest with God, and I says, you know, man, this is a test, God. I'm fucking. Let me tell you. <laughs> I ain't doing so good, you know. But you know what? You know what you do in a struggle? You keep struggling, but you keep, keep going. That's what you do. You don't quit at the, at the middle of the race. You keep going to the end. And that's what Paul said. You know, I'm finishing my course. I'm going to fight the good fight. I'm going to keep going. And that's what it takes, really, to be a Christian, somebody that loves God. It's not to give up halfway through. Some people do. They give up when they're so close. Yep. They're really so close. God wants them to do something, and they get discouraged. Who, you think you're the only one that's been discouraged? No, I said there's, that's happened to a lot of people. But the people that keep going in Christ. You know, I love to see saints that have been saints for 30, 40 years. Because they always crack me up. You know, you get a young preacher up there, and he's preaching. And, they, you know, and, and they've, been, they've been with the Lord 40, 50 years, some of them. And they said, you know, they come up, after, well, you, you got a lot to learn, you know. You don't know a lot yet because all those years with the Lord, you think about it. I remember Grandma, and, and, and if she died, I was nine years old. But that's the first time I remember being in church was sitting on her lap. She always wore white when she went to church. But I remember sitting on that lap. She valued God enough that she wanted to take 
her grandson. You know, he wanted to take and set on. I remember that. And I remember, I was just talking about this the other day, how that, that, that people weren't afraid. Again, I just I feel that night, sometimes we're so afraid what other people might think. We don't want to be called a radical. You know, we don't want to be somebody that upset the apple cart. Well, I think it's time to upset the apple cart. You know, it's time to shake up things. Because sometimes we're just too calm about stuff. It's time to turn some things around. But I remember when I was, I was probably 10 or 11 years old, and in my neighborhood, there was a, a, we used to ride a bicycle in the summer. We never had shirts on. We never combed our hair, but maybe on Sunday, you know, it didn't look very good. Tight, nappy and everything. Never wore shoes, hardly, you know. Barely had clothes on, I think. We just kind of run around the neighborhood. But I remember they said, hey, Tim, hey, Tim, there's this lady up there, and, and she's inviting you in her house, and, and she's taking you through the wordless book about Jesus. She's telling you about Jesus. Why don't you come over there? Man, it's a great experience. I thought, well, that sounds interesting. So she, she'd bring us in, and it wasn't in a bad purpose or nothing. You could tell her heart was right. She'd bring you down in the basement, and she'd set you on these. She had these rugs, like you see the with the lion, you know, tiger skin rugs and stuff. She'd make a set Indian style, which I always hated that. I just wasn't very comfortable. But she'd always sit down. He said, before I give you milk and cookies, I want to tell you about Jesus. I, I never forgot that. I didn't get it the first time, but she took me through the wordless book, had the different colors in there. You know, Tim, this is what sin looks like. This is what the blood of Christ looks like. This is what your heart is when you see Jesus when it was white. And this is what heaven looks like like gold. I never forgot that. Didn't get it the first time, but I definitely got it the second time, and something was different. And this lady had all these, all these minority kids in there, you know, and, 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 and she was willing. To, she didn't care what the neighbors thought about her. And, and she was willing to share Jesus with them. Let them talk. Bring all these old nappy head kids in there. Let them talk. It doesn't make a difference because I care for their soul. And that's what changes. I remember that, that, that house is still there. That street is still there. And every time I'd go down and visit my mom, I'd go by that street and I'd see that house. It's third street, for, third house in the corner. Yeah, yeah. And I'd just go by there one day. I'd throw my car down through her. Praise the Lord. I know she's dead and gone, she's in heaven, but I'm telling you, lady, tell you what, you made a difference in my life because you believe in, in Deuteronomy 6.5. Yeah. She loved the Lord with all of her heart, all of her soul, all of her mind. It didn't matter what everybody else thought. Uh -huh. She had a burden for those kids in the neighborhood. Yes. Well, I wanted to tell that lady, one of those kids that you took in the house back there in 1964 is out here preaching the gospel because you was willing to do that. And that's what God wants. Hallelujah. And that's really what God wants us to do. I just see that, that he wants us to say, you know what? We're not ashamed of the gospel. We are not ashamed. We know what we believe. And it starts in here. No going to shake it. You know, it says in Romans, nothing can separate us from the love of God. Nothing. Nothing. Let, let, I'm going to turn there quick. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. Romans 8. I just think that's one of the most powerful scriptures in the Bible. Because nothing, nothing, I love that. that and, and you think about this. In Romans 8, 38. For I am persuaded, beyond doubt, am sure, that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things impending and threatening, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else. All creation yeah. will be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Now, isn't that, isn't that powerful to think about that? We think, oh, we got this trouble, we got that trouble. We, you know, everybody got things going on. But I tell you what, we need that faith that you can't shake. Because we got a God you can't shake. And I know I've shared this before, but I've never, every image of, I've seen God high and lifted up like Isaiah did. I've never once, never one time, in the years I've been saved, I've never once seen God up in heaven running around wondering, wondering what he's going to do. I've never, I never get a picture of that. I never, I get a, a glorious God on the throne, you know, and like in modern terms, I got this. Uh -huh. If they would just trust me. Now, let me tell you, 
Think about when Jesus came down. And think about it. Somebody that's been in heaven, that came down here, know what heaven's like. And how many times, you know, God the Father, just listen to him. Just listen to him. That's what I want you to believe him. You know, and, and Jesus said, if, if, you know, if, if you've seen me, you know, you've seen the Father, you've seen me. We are one. We are connected. I do what the Father says. And Jesus said, and John, I always do those things that please the Father. That's where we ought to be at. Whether or not it's popular or not, it makes a world of difference being obedient. To be obedient is greater than sacrifice. You know, that makes a, such a big difference. When you hear God's voice and you do what he says, the best Christians I've ever met in my entire life are those people, when they hear God, they do it. Yes. But I mean, it's simple. We're not going to have to say, we're not going to worry about the circumstances. That's, that's why I thank God for Leah. I really do. Mm. I call her my angel because that's what I think. But I, I thank God. You know why? Because one thing she taught me, she hears God, she does it. It may not, you know, these things, you know, sometimes you hear, you think, nope, we're just going to do it. Because God's going to always lead you into righteousness. You know, he's always going to do it. Well, we don't worry about the money thing. God will make that all up. If he says give over here, you know what we're going to do? Write a check. It's gone. That's what's going to happen. You go over and pray for this person. I believe we ought to stop over there. Or we need to go one day just going down the street. And, and let's pull over here. And then you meet somebody, hey, you know, that you need to talk to. I haven't seen you in a while. And you, and you, ne you never know what God has in divine appointments and how many we miss because, we're, well, I don't know. I'm a little bit tired today. I think we're going by. You know, God has a divine appointment. God knows how to have them cross roads and get the right people. Man, I, I was clear out in the, in, in the East Coast. I was in a, Roy Rogers used to have a bunch of restaurants. And I, this, this was a big change for me. Because I had never done it. But I'm telling you, this, this, I was in there with another truck driver, and this young lady came in with our sumo was her dad, and she could tell he walked, she had like several pauses. I'll never forget this, and I share this because I learned one thing to be obedient in Christ. And I felt, never felt it before at that point, but God wanted me to pray for that young lady. I mean, it was so strong, and I was telling my partner over there, I said, I believe God wants me to pray for that young lady. Come on. You know, and we kind of sat there and ate our chicken, you know, <laughs> and every time I just said, man, I know it's God. Because you know it ain't Satan. He don't care about her, but I know it's God. I got to go pray. So we kind of sat there and sat there and sat there. We got to sit there too long. She's going to be leaving. Right. So, so the dad got up. I assumed to go get the car. You know, assumed was his dad. And I went up to him and, and I said, sir, I'm, you know, I, Try not to interfere with your day, but I really feel God wants you to pray for your daughter. That's your daughter? I said, yes, young man, that's my daughter. Can you pray for her? He said, no, that's all right. We just come back from a revival in Florida, and we brought her up hunt front and have her pray for her. But thank you, young man. And I just, I never forgot that. I did as much as I could do. Well, after that, I was gaining a little confidence. I feel I'd done what God wanted me to do. That's as far as I could go, right? So I went into a Walgreens out there, and I'm standing in line, and this lady was behind me, and she was very nice, you know, how you doing? She just was kind of standing there, and, and I just felt impressed again. I says, ma'am, there was a young lady I saw in a restaurant. She had cerebral palsy. She looked, looked like that. Would you mind praying for her? And that lady just looked at me. I sure will. Now, of all the stores you could have gone in, you could have had somebody, well, you're a nut. That's what you are. You're a nut. Yes, we pray for somebody out there. But you know what I'm saying? I sure will. It wasn't no hesitate. She didn't, she didn't think about it. I sure will. So I know that was the right person to talk to in line, and God had a divine appointment. I'm 1,800 miles away from home, right there in the Walgreens, the divine appointment. And God has so many of those. Yes. So many of those. And I believe, and i got to share this one last thing. Because, uh, you know, one thing I love about driving a truck is I had them all the time. <clears throat> I was over at exit 284 where they got the biggest truck stop in the world, Walcott. Well, they used, to have, they used to have a Dairy Queen across the street. Well, the Walcott truck stop was so busy. And I said, well, I'm just going to get it, you know, just pull in there and get something, Dairy Queen. Now, <clears throat> folks, this was in the middle of summer. 
how busy is Dairy Queen in the middle of summer? <laughs> right? Everybody's coming in. Right. So I went in and I ordered some food. And you know what? The Lord, again, he impressed me. She doesn't know me. Mm-hmm. You ought to talk to her about me. And you know what? I know it was God. And the lady ordered my food. And, <clears throat> and I asked her, you know, I was in the evangelism explosion at that time. You know, if you die tonight, you know where you're going to end up at. And I asked her to hope. And she just looked at me and said, I don't know where I'd end up. And I shared the gospel with her and said, ma'am, can I pray with you right now? And you know what? Nobody came in Dairy Queen mm-hmm. for that time. For not one person. That door did not open. You know how some of them had a headphone or taking orders up? Nobody. It's just like it was completely silent. And she reached her hand across there, and I prayed for her. And she received Jesus Christ at that time. Woo-hoo. And you, there was a smile on her face. I know it was real. I know it was real. So after that, God bless you. We're praying for you. And I was getting ready to leave, got my food. And the Lord said, you know what, Tim? You can't leave her here. You just can't. She's a baby. You cannot leave her here. I thought, well, what am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to do now? I drive a truck, you know, I can't come back and really grow. He said, you get on the phone and you call a pastor in the area. That's what you do. So I got the phone book, looked down through it and called the pastor up. And I just kind of went down through there. and This one, you know, and just felt the Lord. And I called him. I said, sir, you don't need to know who I am. I drive a truck. I'm out here at exit 284. There's a Dairy Queen. And a young lady named so-and-so just received the Lord. Okay? She needs to get in the church. Will you promise to take care of her? Said, I sure will. All the pastors that you could have got, well, it's a nut calling me out here. How do I know that? He didn't hesitate. You know what he said? I sure will. I will do that. You know God had the right, and I believe that. I believe that 100% that that man kept his word because he had said it before God and he came out and took that lady and got her in a church and I believe she's serving Christ somewhere. That's how it works, folks. Hallelujah. Oh, tonight, that's one thing I just, I just, I just feel tonight that that's, that's really where we ought to be. We got to know who Jesus Christ is. If somebody asks you that question, we can declare it. And not hesitate. I know whom I believe. Who do men say that I am? I know you're the Christ. You're the Messiah. You're the anointed one. You're the one that changed my life forever. That's who you are. And I'm not doubting it whatsoever. And that's where we got to be at. Oh, hallelujah. I'm going to close the prayer. Father God, we thank you tonight. We thank you that we know who you are. Mm -hmm. And you know who we are. We are your children. And, Lord, we thank you that there's two or three touched are being you're in the midst, that you are here with us. Because yes, that's what it's about. Without you, where would we be? Right. And, Lord, I ask you to touch every family that's here, touch those that are, that are under weather, and let them know we care about them and we love them. Because, Lord, it's all about you our wonderful Lord and Savior. And Lord, we ask you to be with us that you meet every need represented here tonight. And watch over us as we go to our homes and to our family. And Lord, let that light inside of us get brighter and brighter and brighter so people know that we have been with you. And we want to give you the praise. We want to give you the glory. In your wonderful holy name, we pray Amen and amen. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Bless you.